Hi, everyone. So today we'll be talking about Python for .NET or .NET for Python. Uh, this is a Jupyter notebook uh, with a RISE extension for uh, a slideshow. And this is running on uh, Azure notebooks. So just a brief introduction about me. I go by Dan from Ufa everywhere online. You can fi find me on GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, Stack Overflow. Um, so, so what is Python for .NET? It's a package that gives you, uh, that gives Python programmers nearly seamless integration with a .NET runtime. Uh, it works on all major platforms. It even works in uh, Windows subsystems for Linux. And there is a uh, uh, work being done for .NET Core support. Um, so, original developer of this was Brian Lloyd at Zoe Corporation in 2003. Uh, currently, we have five uh, active core developers, um, including myself. So, what is really uh, Python for .NET? So, what you have is a C Python runtime, and on the other side, you have CLR runtime, and Python for .NET is just an interop bridge. And the bridge is very important here because if you try to pass very heavy objects, it will fail or it may fail. So keep your uh, interop code as lean as possible if you can and do most of the logic on one side or the other. So what is uh, Python for .NET good for? Uh, reuse existing .NET assemblies and APIs from Python write extensions for Python in .NET, embed Python engine in .NET app. Uh, this is what I call dark matter enterprise software. So a lot of, uh, you know, enterprise software written in .NET and they want to use some uh, code or they want to expose a scripting API and you can use uh, Python for .NET for that. And then reuse any Python libraries from .NET. Uh, recently, we have seen a lot of activity in the uh, SciPy, PyData community, and TensorFlow. So this is how project looks on GitHub. It used to be in very different uh, uh, version uh, control systems before, uh, like on SourceForge, and even before that on Zoop. Uh, currently, um, you can see we have almost 1,000 stars, uh, over 40 contributors. Uh, a lot of issues, pull requests. So uh, this is uh, the status of the project. We have uh, two chats. Uh, we have a Stack Overflow tag. We have we support uh, all Python versions, major Python versions, and the license is MIT. It used to be Zoop license, and nobody knew what it, what is that. Mm -hmm. And we also test on Travis and AppWare. So uh, I just want to give a shout out to some projects that use Python for .NET and they push it to limits. One of them is Quant Connect. This is a, a financial algorithmic trading platform. Uh, another one um, is, uh, this is Process Simulator that works on uh, all major platforms. Uh, so PyWebView is Pushing, really pushing Python net to the boundary. It, it embeds the web view component from, uh, uh, for example, from WinForms, from uh, Qt, from uh, GTK. So uh, it's a very thin wrapper around web view component. Uh, you can imagine is a very lightweight electron. And uh, on Windows, it uses uh, Python net, but it has also option to use uh, um, uh, PyWin32. So this is a, a new project uh, by a guy whose name I cannot pronounce, Russell McGee. Sorry if I did not pronounce co correctly. So this is a, a cross-platform UI toolkit widget that's very, uh, uh, very open for uh, new contributors. Uh, they they support uh, even mobile platforms. On Windows, they use Python Net uh, again to talk to the dot, uh, to the Win32 APIs. 
Uh, this is a, an interesting project where uh, you can do out of process interop uh, between uh, Python and other uh, uh, libraries. Uh, for example, you can access 32-bit library from 64-bit uh, Python. And for Windows, it uses uh, uh, Python Net. Uh, it's actually cross-platform. So uh, uh, most recently, we, we start seeing more and more use in uh, AI, machine learning, data science. One platform here. So, uh, and there are some uh, use cases for uh, commercial applications. We don't know a lot about a lot of them, of course, because uh, how do you know about that? Unless they report issues. But I do know like uh, there is uh, one major bank that has uh, over 100 users. Uh, uh, it's used a lot in, in engineer automation industries. There was a, a meetup talk by DSpace uh, recently in Germany. So I have a quick question for audience. How many used Iron Python, PyWin32, CompTypes, Python Net before? Raise your hands. Oh, that's pretty good. OK. Uh, just uh, to get a feeling for the audience. Uh, anyone use .NET languages like uh, C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, VB.NET? That's pretty good. Nice. So how many build extensions for Python or embed Python in uh, any other applications? OK. That's a few people. OK. So uh, let's now go into the details. Uh, one thing we made very easy is uh, to install Python .NET. Uh, so you can install it with a pip, you can do a conda install, you can do conda only for Windows currently. Uh, you can use NuGet, that's .NET package manager. Um, so also we have Docker images. Um, so another option we made very easy is deploying. So you can build executables uh, with Python .NET, using PyInstaller, CX Freeze, uh, and most recently the, this uh, PyB project made a briefcase. This is using WX MSI installer. And uh, this is very easy. You just run PyInstaller, your app name, and usually it works uh, as is. There is built-in hooks that detect uh, .NET runtime. Uh, now there is one example we have in one issue. Uh, this is using a game engine, a mono game engine. It talks uh, to uh, DirectX, and it's pretty complicated uh, application, and it, uh, it's just one executable that you can use uh, with PyInstaller. So uh, this is just uh, briefly what the project uh, provides out of box. If you uh, download the solution, uh, you will get this NPython executable, and this embeds the C Python uh, runtime in .NET, and you get this comment prompt. And so you do import system, and this imports immediately the system, which is a .NET uh, namespace. So it's like sys in uh, Python. And you can see this, uh, this is CLR version 4.0. OK. So we also have some demo apps, uh, WinForms, WPF. Now, this is uh, something I tried this year and was really surprised. You can use uh, WSL, which is a Windows uh, uh, subsystem for Linux, and embed Mono uh, in that uh, WSL. And within that Mono, you can uh, have a UI. You see this UI. And this is actually WinForms UI running like an X11 server. It's like basically embed, inside embed, embed, inside embed, lots of layers. But it works. So this is how you can launch these uh, apps. Uh, I can't do this because uh, we don't have time for demo. So this is a Visual Studio experience. Uh, we have a solution. It provides us IntelliSense. We get builds with MS Build. There is uh, hooks into setup.py. Setup we have unit tests uh, in C-sharp Python. Also, it's very handy, the Visual Studio experience for debugging. We can even do mixed mode uh, cross-debugging. I have a demo at the end 
like just GIF. And there is also interactive C Sharp uh, that gives IntelliSense if you want to test out Python net from the, uh, so this is the solution. Okay. Uh, this is if we had time for demo. So script CS is like a Python interactive prompt, but for C, C Sharp, uh, very nice if you need to use C Sharp with Python net, uh, try it out. Uh, so disclaimer, so Python for that net is not uh, running on top of .NET runtime. If you want something that's running on top of .NET runtime, it's a project called Iron Python. What a Python net is, is just C API calls uh, from uh, uh, .NET to uh, Python and vice versa. There is another interesting project called Pigeon, which uh, allows to JIT compile Python to IL bytecode, which is uh, .NET bytecode. So getting started, and normally everything should work as is. There is nothing special uh, for, uh, there is very good Iron Python documentation if you want uh, to follow that. We, we try to match Iron Python uh, uh, API as much as possible. So uh, let's give some example. Impo so before importing, uh, I, I'm actually installing this right in Azure Notebooks. Right now there is one issue, so I'm using this deprecated o uh, option, but what this does is uh, this will install right from GitHub, Python net. And behind the scenes, be this is Azure Notebooks, so there is mono runtime, not the .NET framework. This is on Linux. And we also have a CLR magic. This is extension for, that, uh, for Jupyter Notebooks. So, so this is all you do, import CLR, and this immediately provides hook into .NET runtime. So you can do from system import string. This is .NET string. You can also add references. This adds references to .NET assemblies. And then uh, once you add the reference, you can do imports. Um, so actually, this is very long presentation. This is supposed to be 40 minutes, but uh, I will be skipping a lot. Sorry about this. So um, you can use classes. This is example, uh, just uh, using points from drawing.net. Now, there is very difficult part, method overloading. As you know, there is no uh, method overloading in uh, Python, but there is in .NET. So we have to do a lot of magic behind the scenes. Uh, so one thing we provide is that you can look up all available overloads using this dot overloads, okay? And um, uh, very similar for generics. Uh, so you use the Python indexing syntax to hook up into generics, uh, .NET generics, and then um, so you can also pass the Python types as .NET types. You can see I'm creating dictionary, .NET dictionary using Python strings and integers. Uh, you can use Python, uh, .NET uh, fields and uh, properties. No issue with that. So indexers, this is a, like a very similar to indexing in a Python. So we also provide hooks into .NET indexers. So here, uh, so here, this is actually the, the CLR magic. What I'm doing is I'm creating a code cell for C Sharp. And you can see uh, this is now a, an object that you can call from Python. So I'm creating this indexer now. So methods work as normal. Uh, you can, uh, you, you have hook, hooks into the help, so you can use uh, Python help to uh, look up into .NET objects. So like I mentioned, overloads is complicated. Normally it works as is, there are some corner cases. So be careful. Try to use uh, impl uh, explicit uh, calling instead of implicitly relying on overloading. 
So exception handling, we have very good uh, hooks into exception handling. You can catch .NET exceptions from Python and vice versa. This is very boring, delegates events, I'm skipping. <laughs> arrays, you can use uh, .NET arrays. Okay. Uh, so you can use the indexing, Python indexing for .NET arrays. Multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, so these are C-sharp and multi-dimensional arrays. More, more like NumPy's and NumPy arrays. Collections, uh, so. So I'm, I'm skipping to go into interesting stuff. Com, interop, uh, it's legacy, but it's very handy if you work with Office products. We have early and uh, late binding for com. A type conversion. So this normally works as is, but the types do not match one to one. So be careful like with in 32, in 64 and so on. Float, uh, floats and double precisions, single precision uh, floats. Uh, there is also some issues with boxing. So be careful like uh, when doing this kind of stuff. Uh, so next is, I wanted to go into embedding. So you can embed Python in .NET. So all you do is Python engine initialize. There is new API also py.gil. This will uh, in, in immediately initialize. Remember to hold the gil, which is global interpreter log when you call, make calls into Python runtime. This is very important. So this is talks about this. This is a Python net tutorial, by the way, just a normal tutorial. So okay, now interesting stuff. You can call NumPy from .NET using Python. So uh, I'm doing some crazy magic here, but uh, now uh, you, uh, I'm calling, uh, using CLR magic, I'm calling uh, NumPy. from C Sharp actually. So this is Python, C Sharp, Python. So, okay. So we can call SymPy if you know, and this is symbolic uh, Python. So we need to go deeper. Python embedded in Python using Python, why not? <laughs> so you see I have Python runtime uh, and this is uh, on the top there is a Python net, on the top there is Python, so the, it's like like a sandwich, Python, C sharp, and Python. Okay, TensorFlow, you cannot run this in notebook, you need script CS, so you can use script CS. Uh, this is the code, so you can make calls from .NET into TensorFlow using uh, Python net. And this is some demos I have uh, for uh, debugging. So one case is mixed mode debugging. So you can do cross language debugging. This is uh, debugging between uh, C sharp and .NET. Oh, sorry, C sharp and Python. So y you see I'm calling from C sharp into Python. And this, you can step back and forth and you get the call stack watch and so on. Another case, uh, remote debugging, you can remote debug into this Python code embedded with Python net. So, this is using Python tools for Visual Studio, by the way. So it works from Windows, but you can debug into WSL or Linux. There is no problem with that. So, and I think I have, last slide, thanks for bearing with me. Mm -hmm. So, low level implementation details. So how does this work? Actually, um, we have to make hooks between Python and .NET runtimes. And uh, .NET uh, objects are not normally exposed to native. We use DLL export uh, for Windows and we use C API of Mono on Linux and OS X for, for uh, exposing .NET types to unmanaged code, which is Python uh, code. Uh, I mean, C API of Python. And then we use PyC parser and Clang for 
uh, parsing the C Python header files uh, so that these ob objects can be hooked into uh, C sharp. And then we use .NET reflection. It's like get attribute and compile in Python. So we have like a, we can build uh, types on the fly if necessary. And then the Python macros, like C API macros, have to be re-implemented in unsafe C sharp code, uh, both for performance, but sometimes they are not even available. Uh, so normally with macros, you get them at compile time, but uh, we have to do this at runtime. That's why. I think that's it. I am open to questions. We have time for about two questions. <coughs> about how far along do you think the uh, .NET Core work is? How long do you see that taking? So we, we have a big, question. yes, uh, the question is uh, .NET Core support, what's the timeline? So uh, roughly speaking, uh, one side already works. We are working on the other side, which is much more complicated. Uh, there is one company willing to support financially and with testing, uh, but there is not enough people who can write and debug and work on this code. Uh, so if, you, if anyone has uh, interest in uh, C, C Sharp, Python mixed all together, please talk to me. Uh, we can't use uh, existing DLL export project for this. We have to use either C API of uh, uh, C API of uh, .NET uh, Core, or we have to use uh, a project from Mono called Embedinator 400. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it, we need people, you know, for testing, for uh, writing this code. Uh, it's a lot. It's like probably a, a few months of work at this point. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Word or uh, like Office documents, uh, basically. Can you give some applications or some examples of things you can do with it or what is possible? Can you, for example, do it on Linux? So for uh, Office, uh, yes, uh, the question is, what can you do with Office documents uh, with uh, Python Net? So first of all, the Office I'm talking about is uh, only Office on Windows. So that's uh, starting probably from 2007 to 2016. Uh, uh, the most, uh, the best API for, com, uh, for uh, Office right now is cominterop. So uh, you can use uh, Python net with cominterop, but it's a little bit quirky right now. We, uh, you have to use like .NET reflection sometimes, or you have to use early binding. Uh, so uh, uh, on Linux, this will not work. On Mac OS, this will not work. If you need serious work with Excel from uh, 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 Python, I re recommend Excel Wings, a very nice library. If you have money you can spend, you can use PyXLL. Uh, one of the core developers of PythonNet is actually a PyXLL uh, author. Uh, and uh, Excel Wings also works on Mac. So there is no, no equivalent on Linux. Okay, All that's right, it. Let's Thank you. Do the